national members that will present their societies today. And uh, well, um, please um, leave, leave your questions for the end of the, in, during the discussion so that we can do it fluently. And uh, well, that, that's all for a moment. Today we will present the national sensory societies from Italy, Germany and Norway. Uh, the first uh, society will be the Italian, the Italian one, which will be presented by the chair, Erminio Monteleone. So, well, please, Erminio, uh, uh, introduce the society yourself and, and well, I leave you the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carolina. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I will um, spend uh, the next 10, 15 minutes, uh, more or less, less than more, um, uh, presenting the Italian Sensory Society, um, um, called SIS. I'll, okay, I'll try to share the screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, the Italian Sensory Society was founded in 2002 thanks to Professor Mario Bertuccioli that uh, you can see here, our Einstein. Uh, by, and uh, he, he, he lead a group of 12 members from university and public uh, research center. Mario Bertuccioli had a vision um, early in the 90s uh, in Italy about sensory, and um, he was uh, really the person who uh, let the, 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 at that time, young researcher to grow and, and set up what uh, we have uh, now. So. I take the opportunity to thank once again uh, Mario Bertuccioli for what he did. Uh, this is a non-profit organization uh, with the scientific purposes, of course, and uh, members are individuals belonging to academia, private and public research organizations, uh, but also industry, uh, even freelancer can be members uh, and also amateurs, uh, people just interested in, uh, in sensory perception of food or non-food, other things. Uh, we are organized with a general assembly that uh, gives the, the, the strategy um, of uh, of the the society uh, every year and uh, uh, there is a board composed with seven people that uh, manage the activities uh, uh, under the responsibility of just one chair chairperson so it's a the organization is is quite similar to e3s but uh, members are individuals rather than societies uh, the, the number of members has increased a lot uh, in, the, in the 20 years. The next year we will have uh, the, the 20th the anniversary of our society. Uh, and uh, the grown has been constant uh, uh, and quite steep in between 2010 and 2018. Uh, partially because the, the general grown on, of the interest in sensory science all over the world, but also thanks also to a quite important activity that the society did uh, during, in, particularly uh, um, from 20, uh, 2010 and 2016. Uh, and we, I'll, I'll tell a few things about that uh, later. 60% uh, of um, uh, our members are from university and public research organizations and 40% from private uh, organizations. This is, has been also a, a big change because at the beginning um, members were exclusively from university or public research organizations. So um, we are quite very proud that uh, a number 
of people working in in private companies are joining the, our society, and there are several interests uh, that uh, we we can represent. Um, the, the Italian Sensory Society, the Società Italiana di Scienze Sensoriali, has got uh, um, a network of 21 sensory labs. And when I say a network, uh, I mean that they have been able, they have shown uh, to be able to work together to applying the same procedures in in uh, in. Uh, a couple of uh, research, three research projects. Uh, we are also uh, organized in, we have, the, our, our regulations allowed the constitution of working groups, and we have uh, one working group on food and beverage companies, so it means that uh, the um, uh, food industries actually are uh, create, uh, have created a, a, a working group uh, to share um, 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 well ideas or procedures or uh, critical uh, problems solutions uh, among them uh, we have also um, uh, a, a working group called uh, Mindin Mouth Mimo uh, that uh, is a, a working group uh, uh, linking um, um, sensory science and and neuroscience. We have a, a working group called Karen Sense, working on so-called no, no food products, and also an olive oil uh, working group. Um, uh, this is these are the the, the activities that we uh, quite uh, uh, regularly uh, run uh, of course you know time by time we have uh, um, we have uh, um, better define our activities but i can say that uh, f since uh, 2014 what we organize is more or less organized in the intensive course on sensory evaluation methods for sensory project manager uh, I'll tell you a few things about that. Uh, we organize an un annual sensory workshop since 2002. So every year there is one day dedicated to, uh, let's to say, a hot topic in sensory science. Um, uh, and we normally invite people uh, from Italy or from abroad to give a, a, a key presentation and then we have a discussion on the topic. Um, but uh, also we organize a course since 2016 and um, advanced course in understanding consumers, uh, uh, which is at an international level. And uh, since this year we started a, a course on the use of implicit tests in sensory consumer science. Um, again, as an international, international uh, um, courses. Uh, the, the, the COVID uh, um, gave us the opportunity to, um, to start uh, this SIS uh, uh, training webinar um, uh, that were dedicated to the application of sensory methods in, in industry. So we, we ran a, a number of um, of webinar quite short, like three hours every month dedicated to specific problem of applying sensory method in food industries and food and non-food industries. So this is what we, uh, we, are, we are able to run uh, every year, then, then we can change a little bit depending on what the assembly, the general assembly uh, decide every year. Um, we have organized um, uh, a number seven national conferences. Uh, the number of attendees is uh, always around 100, 150. Uh, so um, all members, but also always new people, come to attend the, uh, our our conferences. And the topic of conferences are becoming more and more transversal, uh, involving uh, other competencies uh, out of out of uh, sensory science. Uh, 
And uh, during these conferences, we award the uh, uh, young researcher. Uh, for each conference, we have five awards uh, just to recognize merits uh, of youngs. And, uh, uh, and we do that regularly since 2015. Of course, courses and conferences are the main, you know, the principal way of founding uh, or, 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 or um, uh, have re um, financial resources for our society. Most of the time, the, um, the members of the society uh, just volunteer in giving courses and, uh, uh, and webinars and so on. Uh, we have organized uh, three international conferences. One, the first one was Eurocent, the first Eurocent uh, in 2004 in Florence. Uh, at that time, it was called the European Conference on Sensory Science and Food Beverages. Um, it was Mario Bertuccioli who really wanted uh, uh, to organize that conference. He worked on wine and uh, he, he created this very nice uh, very nice um, brochure with the wine and the reflection, which is the uh, Brunelleschi couple. So quite quite nice uh, brochure. Uh, then then we organized Pangborn, of course. That was uh, probably the most important uh, um, conference organized by CIS. And then mo uh, three years ago, we organized Eurosense in uh, in Verona, which was very successful. A very successful meeting, uh, but uh, uh, we have done also something practical for our uh, members and for our um, and for our in industry or private companies. We we use the uh, um, European qualification uh, framework to recognize the um, uh, knowledge, and skills, and competencies of for not recognizes recognized professions uh, like a sensory a sensory project man manager is uh, to open uh, thanks to the the european law and the, the national law that uh, um, 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 conformed to the european um, law uh, we opened the, the the register of the sensory project manager which is recognized uh, by the ministry of economic development in italy uh, and so we we as organization we are able to uh, recognize the uh, knowledge skill and competencies of our members and we also uh, worked with the italian organization for standardization and so uh, we uh, defined a specific norm for the certification of the sensory project manager this is uh, extremely important. It's a good example of um, making, you know, a, a good benefit for members who are not from academia. And uh, among our uh, members, there are 49 sensory project manager and 12 sensory project man manager junior, because this this professional figure has got two level. One um, um, uh, let's just say more mature as as sensory uh, manager and um, uh, a one one level for beginners. Um, uh, Probably one of the best things that we have done is to involve members in activities to create a, a, a strong identity of the society. So we, uh, in, in 2012, when we had uh, almost uh, 50 members, 60 members, we involved 48 of them as authors of one book, The Atlante Sensoriale dei Prodotti Alimentari. It was a, a, a quite interesting um, 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 occasion to 
put together all the members in writing uh, the way of applying descriptive analysis to the most uh, popular Italian food products and was uh, was a really a good uh, good activity with a very strong outcome so th this book is now used as textbook in many many university courses or technical courses to describe the sensory properties of um, and in food industries as well and uh, well this is this was uh, already said this uh, probably uh, uh, but also we uh, we organize research activities um, uh, that are documented by 21 research papers published in peer-reviewed journals uh, with uh, uh, almost uh, 200 citations since 2017. So so and and this this activity was involved a number of members. Uh, thanks to two projects. One is quite popular in the sensory field, it's called Italian Taste and is on, on the individual differences in food preferences among Italians uh, that involved um, 21 uh, um, labs in Italy and uh, allowed us to produce uh, all these papers that uh, we I, I said before uh, and from that experience from 2017 2020 um, um, the the CIS was a beneficiary of a, a na national strategic research project uh, that was based on Italian taste and was focused on individual difference in the acceptability of healthy foods focus on field fat content and um, the, stra the, the, the strategy in research was uh, exactly the one that we used in Italian taste and this it was very good to see that uh, uh, that uh, this our activity in Italian taste that was self-founded was really well recognized by the, the, the research board uh, responsible for the selection of na national strategic projects. And during the COVID uh, um, uh, lockdown, we, uh, we started the, the project uh, on remote testing because uh, the society understood that uh, um, probably uh, the COVID would have changed the, the way of collecting sensory, uh, in a, sensory data in a controlled way. And uh, uh, that's why we ran a specific uh, uh, experiment to compare data obtained by the same people, the same products in both conditions um, um, in laboratory and in remote testing, which is not home test, but is remote testing. So it's producing the sensory lab at home or in remote conditions. And we have published this paper in Food Quality and Preference as well. So we, uh, this 20 years of story of CIS and uh, according to the prog program, I should say what we do next, but I think that uh, CIS uh, as a structure uh, that uh, will uh, will resist for the, the next year, uh, of course, we will adapt to the content and what we do and our focus um, uh, to the need of the uh, times, um, um, but uh, I think that uh, what I showed you in terms of what we offer to our members and what uh, the activities that we tend to do will, will remain more or less the same. Progressively, we have been focusing from products when we started the early in 2000 to person and I think that uh, we will keep going in that direction. Thank you for uh, your attention and uh, I leave the, the floor to the next uh, spe speaking speaker. Oops, sorry. I should come back here, interrompo la condivisione. Yes, that's it. I'm back.
Thank you, Arminia, for this very complete and full of ideas uh, presentation. Uh, I think that the next speaker is um, uh, Dirk Miner, as representative of Germany. Uh, just a short note to say that I will need to leave in because I have uh, teaching duties in 20 minutes. So please don't feel that I'm not interested in, in the presentation, but I, I have duties and I will need to leave in 20 minutes. So go on, Dirk, the floor is yours. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, yes. we see the screen, yes. Okay, but, so. but you can put it in, in presentation mode. It is in presentation mode. <laughs> At least uh, I no, I don't think so. Okay, then let me try it again. It's the first time I'm working with Google, so therefore. It always shows me it goes out of the the platform, so. Okay. Let, let, let me try again. Yeah, yeah. But now it says one. I mean that uh, we, we can see it, but uh, it, it's enough that you click on the. I was saying, if it says present, it says mm. the whole screen or one window. So what do I have to select? Yeah, the whole screen is fine. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what I'm selecting. Do you see it now? Is it go? Yeah. Is it full screen now for you or not? Yes, but I mean, in, in PowerPoint, you need to put it in full screen, in PowerPoint. Yes, I, I did put it in PowerPoint, full screen. No, no, My I, I mean, oh, well, OK, it's just gone. Now let me just. Better like that? Yeah. Okay, let me try. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Emilio, and, and thanks, uh, the E3S, for giving me the opportunity to present our German society. Um, yes, it, for us, it also feels like a little bit once upon a time. So it feels like ages, but in fact, it's just 10 years ago, uh, or sorry, 11 years ago. And in fact, exactly tomorrow, it will be 11 years when we have founded um, our German sensory society, and it was all led by the initiative of Mechtel Bustockwisch. Most of you probably know her. She has retired by now, uh, but she's still active in our organization. Um, and it was 11 years ago when we started in Germany to build our nonprofit organization, the DG Sense or DG Sense, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Sensorik, um, with a couple of 16 founding members. And as you can see already on the logos of the uh, people involved, um, it was always for us quite important to have a good balance between the universities, the service providers like agencies and the industry. So already in the beginning, we were a good balance. Uh, and that brought us to our mission that we decided that we want to become the Association for Sensory Professionals in Germany, based on the good collaboration between universities, industry, and agencies and service providers. And that brought us to our mission that we saw the need to promote actively the sensory science, research, and education, especially the interdisciplinary support and enhancement of sensor analysis and consumer research in Germany, which we thought at that time was lagging behind a little bit compared to other countries. Um, our membership showed a similar development like the one showed by Aminio. Uh, we have nowadays around about 160 memberships, but in total we have 270 members because a membership is depending on if you're a private person, if you're a company, so a company has one membership, but a couple of members. 
So when we look on the people behind, we have 270 registered members. And a little bit different to what we've just seen in Italy, for us, uh, the driver, 80% are industry and agencies, and only around about 20% are from academia universities. Um, and this gives you a little bit a snapshot of a couple of our members. Mainly all universities are part of the German Association. All of the big service providers like, you know, Easy, Eurofin, SAM, Arotop, um, they're all part in Germany. And many of the companies, yeah, I only have shown a few uh, because we have quite a lot of more in our you know, group of um, members. We are structured. Excuse me, Dirk, uh, we don't see any change on the screens. Perhaps you are moving your mm -hmm. presentation and we are st ah, okay, now. <laughs> we were st still in the first one. It's just to let you know, okay? Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, then, then I just skip that <laughs> <laughs> very quickly. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling with Google. It's probably the first time that I use it, uh, this platform. But, but now you can see the screens changing, um, hopefully. Yes, we do. Um, and our structure is that apart from our national structure, we have four regional working groups who are, have a high meeting frequency two to three times per year with 25 to 40 members each. And these groups are open for all. So you don't have to be a registered member or something. Everybody who has interest in sensory can join this group. They're cross-functional and non-hierarchical. Um, and of course, just a couple of pictures. They meet in person, they meet uh, at different locations, mostly in one of the companies is hosting. Of course, they changed last year due to the COVID restrictions to online meetings. And they have even increased the frequency to quarterly meetings because there was so much discussion on how to cover with COVID restrictions, uh, where they could exchange experience, learn from each other, uh, that they use it quite a lot, as I said, once every three months in all of the groups to meet uh, with other people in, you know, in the same situation. Next to the um, regional working groups, we do have three thematic working groups. Uh, sorry, but the logos are in German, but I'll explain them one by one. Um, one of them is for the um, working group on education. Here are all people involved who are working at universities or in academia, working with students, um, not only the professors, but also the people on the ground, so in the lab, all the people are exchanging um, their, their knowledge and their challenges and support each other. And they just have released a big comprehensive list of all available sensory courses and programs in Germany, which then students or people of interest can download on our homepage. The second working group is a so-called working group on quality. They are developing um, best practice methods, especially for articles of daily use, like devices, coffee machines, kitchenware, and disposables. And again, everybody can get them as a free download on our homepage. And a new working group we have started last year. As we thought, it's more and more to think about ethical questions. Uh, we started a working group who, whose aim is to develop some guidance and guidelines for sensory ethical questions, how to handle them, and how to cover these aspects in the future. So what did we do? Um, a little bit like what we've seen in Italy, we also have a yearly conference, uh, the so-called German Sensory Days, which are two days filled with um, symposium. We are changing locations, so from Munich to Berlin to Hamburg, because we have made the experience, the more we change or travel within Germany, the more you can attract all the companies close by where you have your um, conference. We have poster sessions, student awards, um, and of course, an evening event, some live tastings, because networking, networking is one of the key assets uh, for all our people in our organization. So just a couple of, of pictures. Um, we are presenting then free proceedings as downloads on the homepage where we have a summary of all the presentations and posters from the conference. Um, and this is becoming quite big events nowadays. So one of our last event, live event was in Leipzig uh, where we had 170 participants. But then we had to switch, of course, to online meetings the last two years. And here, the biggest challenge for us was how to yeah, bring the experience um, of our live conferences now into, into kind of online presentations. 
and we made three decisions. On the one side, um, we, uh, we hired a good agency uh, to broadcast our event and we made it more like a TV journal show in the evening or something, so quite interactive and not as boring and like staring in front of the screen all the time. So we had some interaction between the people on stage while everybody uh, of the participants was sitting at home and watching it. We also um, developed an emotional teaser video for that. And as it's always a challenge, especially for me, it looks like. Um, so I couldn't imagine to broadcast now the videos, but you find a QR code and I'm pretty sure you will get the presentation afterwards where you can see the video uh, just by using the QR code. And to bring some of the live experience, we also um, sent to all of the participants in advance a small kind of package where they found some samples um, because we did a um, kind of online tasting during the event that everybody got some samples at home and then uh, we could do some live tasting during the seminar with all of the 150 or more participants. And one year we did it on cookies because our theme was celebrating 10 years of the German association. We had specifically developed biscuits um, from the past, nowadays and the future, which our participants and could try out and give their feedback. And this year we had some specifically developed chocolates from a patisserie in Germany um, with three pralines, which are attracting the different senses in a different way. And the people had to find out which senses uh, were, yeah, impacted by the, the different pralines and all that and all of that we did online. So um, one year we had a peak of almost 370 participants last year, but I'm pretty sure that was almost uh, only due to the fact that it was a totally free um, webinar or course because we were celebrating our 10 years anniversary in Germany and therefore uh, we didn't charge any money and then we at 370 participants, but normally we are around about 150, 170 participants for each of our conferences. Uh, we also asked our um, attendees, what does it bring to you? Are we on the right way? And, and this was the feedback we got this year, so that we really can deliver to them new insights, new expertise, new stimuli and ideas for their own practice and a lot of motivation and inspiration. Um, then we also want to promote a little bit more our students. We have a so-called student award. We switched here now from the typical call for posters to a call for videos, which we identified seems to be more attractive for the students and more easy to handle from our side. Um, and based on the huge success, we are now giving three awards. Uh, a sensory science award, where we have a jury from university members only, an application award with a jury more looking from the industry perspective on the outcome or on the videos and a creativity award where all our members uh, can participate and choose their favorite videos. And by now we had 34 students or 34 awards we could give since 2012 when we started that uh, and promote some of the youngsters in our community. Our communication tool is mainly nowadays uh, just our homepage. And of course, we are on LinkedIn, Facebook, seeing all these social platforms. Uh, we stopped all print communication because of sustainability. Uh, we said we will only communicate without any printed programs um, in the future. Our training and education is another big pillar of our activities. Uh, here we are focusing more or less on three areas. So on methods, data analysis and management. And we have done around about 50 workshops in the last 10 years. And you can see on some of the titles uh, how broad the different areas are we are covering in our workshops. And we, here we also include our members. So we always do surveys and ask, what are the hot topics? What is your interest? Where do you see the challenges? What are the themes of tomorrow? And then based on that, we try to tailor and develop workshops to, to help the people or um, participants to yeah, with these kind of different topics. Um, Again, our challenge here was to transfer this into online webinars and sensory is all about experience. So that means about tasting, feeling, touching. And here we did the extra mile then 
uh, we provided them always with big packages of stimuli. So when people were booking a training uh, with us, then they received a big parcel with a lot of training stimuli that during the online courses and they could taste and feel uh, and get the whole experience of all the senses in the training courses. Then we have something what we call Degesens on Tour. Um, before you ask, no, we don't have this bus. Uh, it's just um, a gimmick. But what we are doing here is that we are bringing our workshops and lectures to the universities. Because all the training I've shown before, of course, is more for people from industry. They have to pay some money for it. And that is not accessible for the students who hardly have the money or the the travel budget to, to come to this training. So here we turned it then um, the other way around that we said, okay, then we go to the universities for free um, and we present how to transfer science into added value. So how to apply sensory in business. We are bringing some specific topics and workshops to the students. And of course, we show them a little bit from our experience, what is the content and scope of future jobs or the current and future working areas in business. The reason why we're doing that is on the one side, of course, it's an active knowledge transfer, but on the other side, our experience was a little bit that in Germany, you cannot study sensory as a topic. It's always part of ecotrophology or um, food technology, um, food science or something else. And therefore, a lot of students, uh, they get an award and are the sensory pipeline of the future. And then when they start into their jobs, we lose them. Then they end up in quality assurance or product development. Um, because they don't see the beauty of sensory. In the universities, they only have short segments on sensory lectures where they focus on, I wouldn't call it the boring part, but just on method and on statistics. And they don't see the fancy and the, they don't get the glimpse in the eyes when they talk about sensory because it's very technical due to the small amount of time often just happening at university. So here we are trying to show them the beauty of sensory to ensure that we have a talent hub pipeline for our sensory community in Germany. Just again, a couple of pictures. This year we had three university uh, where we, we didn't went to the students due to COVID. We did it online, but normally we are there on site. And the last aspect we are doing is what we call a little bit brand building. We've probably seen it a little bit on the charts. So we really uh, work a lot on our um, uh, appearance. How do we want to be seen as an as an um, organization. So we have an agency who developed our touch and feel for us as an um, association. And this one is a little bit of a gimmick. Of course, we don't have that yet, but just to demonstrate the power of an organization like um, the sensor organization has already. And I'm pretty sure if you would show that to our participants, some of them would like to ask how to get them. But what we have done is we developed a very nice image video about ourselves. But again, I was struggling to showcase it here in this short webinar. If you have the time, just scan the barcode, uh, or sorry, the QR code, and, and enjoy and relax the video. Uh, when you have time, it's around two and a half minutes, but it gives a little bit the momentum and the spirit and the family approach in our organization. So this is our strategy on a glance. It shows a little bit what was our target, what are we doing, and what are the three pillars of activity, activities. And to close, uh, what is the outlook for 2022? Of course, we continue with our training and coaches. Uh, our next focus will be a lot be on, uh, on the one side, how to get back to the new normal. So how to reactivate panels after the COVID sleep, um, and yeah, how to train home panels more efficiently and everything which is operational optimization. And another big topic for next year is sensory claims. Here we are planning a webinar series where we cover that intensively. Um, the last one we have just started one month ago during our last conference is the new Godfather program. I didn't want to write the youngsters meet the old ones, um, but it's really to match the people who are just graduating, who are just entering their first job in sensory, uh, and we are matching them with one person who has already, um, it's more on the third part or the last third of his career, so a little bit older and experienced to, to have a, a sparing partner, somebody who can introduce the youngsters into the network. So this is a new kind of Godfather program just started, and we have a group of 15 students and 15 
uh, mentors who will do that from the beginning of next year. Our next conference is in Düsseldorf, so we are quite optimistic planning for a live conference again in November next year. And the people behind, um, we are also structured in the same way like in Italy. We have uh, our main board, which is um, Sonia, Patrick, Thomas, Guido, and myself. Uh, but not to forget, uh, we had a couple of former board members who are quite active in all that. What I've shown, especially Mechtel, who founded the whole organization, but also Andreas and Andrea as former board members. And never forget Jacqueline, our assistant, our secretary, the only one uh, working as an employee for us. Um, but she, she's doing all the administration and office work. Okay, many thanks for your attention and sorry for the hiccup at the beginning and therefore it took a couple of minutes longer. Now I think I will hand over to Venka from Norway. Okay, uh, Carolina is gone. Uh, Okay, thank you very much, Dirk. This was very nice to the presentation. Thank, thank you very much. Very informative. Um, uh, I've been uh, in in the E3S for many years, but uh, I've had ever the opportunity to know in detail the activities of of the German society. So thank you very much. It was very informative. Thank you. A lot of things and also a lot of things in common. So we should share something. Um, uh, and then uh, it, it is a pleasure to introduce Venke Larsen, a good friend from from Norway. Uh, and please, Venke, could you uh, present the uh, Norwegian Soci Sensory Society? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Arminio. Uh, I'm looking forward to tell a little bit about the Norwegian Sensory Society. Uh, I would just ask, can you see my screen at the moment? Yes, uh, the the only problem is that uh, we see what uh, duplicated, uh, yeah, in is some way. So, enough? yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that. This is the way. Yeah, good, okay. perfect. Good. Go on. Yeah. Okay. As I said, I'm, uh, my name is Svenke Amlem Larsen. I'm looking forward to tell a little bit about the Norwegian Sensory Society, or SSG as we are called. Uh, the Norwegian Sensory Society is an independent, non-profit and informal networking consisting of companies from the food industry, the non-food industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and as well as researchers and educational institutes. It was established in 1972, so we are quite old. And next year we will have our 50th anniversary. Um, the SSG is led by a board consisting of four people and all is voluntarily work. Uh, I would also like to add that we have close uh, cooperation with the research institute Nofima in Norway, uh, which has been uh, the founder of the uh, network as well. Um, uh, this is our members. At the moment, we are uh, 28 uh, um, companies which are members in our community, um, and they represent uh, their company with between two to four people. So, uh, at the moment, we are approximately 80 to 85 active members in uh, in SSG. Uh, our main activity is that uh, twice a year we meet up um, uh, uh, to have uh, or to exchange knowledge and to have lectures on sensory topics and also to do uh, tasting sessions. And that a typical meeting is uh, based on uh, maybe research from uh, or the recent research. Uh, done by some of the members or activity they are uh, doing at the moment and also uh, when we do the tasting sessions it could be a new products um, launched in uh, Norway or it could also be uh, testing new methods uh, which we have not uh, used earlier on. Um, in addition we have uh, a biannual meeting of 
uh, sensory trained panels. Um, this we organize for for our members uh, so they could bring uh, along their judges and panels um, uh, to yeah to to have a social event of course. Uh, and again, we used to have uh, both lectures and tasting sessions, and these are quite popular popular um, uh, social events. Uh, also, of course, including uh, a nice dinner and uh, um, yeah, uh, some program of, of social sort. Um, uh, regarding earlier projects, uh, this is uh, one of the projects that I would like to mention, which is maybe one that we are most proud of uh, in SSG. Uh, and this is our sensory book. Um, the first edition came out as early as 1977. Um, and, and then it has, uh, we have every 20 year uh, approximately, uh, a new version has uh, come out. Um, the book gives easy access to important sensory topics uh, and is also used as a complement in the university courses at bachelor level. Uh, the book is written by our members in SSG um, and is uh, basically done on voluntary work. Um, other earlier activity that I, which is not that long ago was that SSG was the host for the fourth uh, E3S symposium, which also was uh, together with the 16th Nordic workshop in sensory science. This was a uh, cooperation between SSG and uh, Nofima, and uh, a taste of the future was the topic. So it was both on children and food preferences, Taylor made healthy food and Nordic food trends, um, which was discussed. Uh, SSG has also earlier on uh, been the host for many of the Nordic workshops. Uh, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, for a few years ago, um, there was, um, uh, or our members, they, they was, they, there was a little bit of frustration, really, because, um, you know, the best in test, uh, which is often conducted by the newspapers or media house, um, they have a big impact on how a new product sells uh, in the Horeca segment. And often uh, the, our members saw that uh, perhaps the sensory methods that were used were not um, as, it, it, yeah, it, 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 perhaps that, or it, it was uh, thought that it, uh, we should uh, show a little bit on how best practice on how to do those type of tests uh, was done. So uh, SSG, we made guidelines and an animated film regarding how to do a product test. And as I said, it was information that was aimed to the media houses and newspapers. And I thought I should try to, to share um, this uh, video, but I'm not sure if I'm uh, able to do it. Uh, I, we did some trial <laughs> earlier on and we saw that the sound was not uh, I wasn't able to to share this the sound. Um, there is a link of the film in the chat, uh, so you can go and click on if you like. And I will also now show and try to explain a little bit. the The film is in Norwegian, <laughs> uh, but it has English subtitles. So let's see. Uh, so uh, 
basically we made an animated film regarding how to plan a test um, and how to conduct the test. And uh, we set up uh, a set of rules uh, uh, where rule number one is uh, thoroughly plan the test. While rule number two was to adapt test after product and panel. Uh, and as you know, there is a big difference in if uh, if you should test the product to children regarding uh, to elderly. And rule number three, it was how to execute the test. No cell phones. Don't swallow the samples. Do you have not smoke or have perfume? And do not talk too much. Be prepared. Uh, then we have a set of rules how to report uh, the test. So, this was our test, or our film, as I would like to say. Okay, let's move on. Um, at the moment, uh, we have, oh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I just need to switch off something. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Okay. Nothing dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, commercial is uh, always an I Let's see. I'm getting there. Almost finished. So let's see. There. OK, our current activities at the moment, we uh, have been looking into the single use plastic directive um, from uh, July uh, 2021. Um, the ban regarding use of um, especially perhaps um, single used uh, spoons or uh, knives, um, but also for straws and, uh, and other uh, equipment has affected our members both on the products that they are selling uh, to, to consumers, but also on how to, to test uh, their products. Because the alternative uh, non-plastic products, uh, which is uh, single-used, often uh, perhaps gives uh, some uh, sensation in the mouth or gives some taste to the products, which is not preferable. So this is something we have been looking a little bit into to, uh, together uh, with our members, try to find good alternative on, on, on what to use in our uh, sensory and consumer testing. Um, and we are also uh, looking into uh, how sensory science uh, have been affected by COVID, uh, both uh, on how sensory and consumer testing are conducting due to this re restriction uh, to limiting the spread of the virus, but also if the pandemic have changed habits and some consumer preferences. Yeah. So. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Venke. Very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. 
uh, and even here we had we have learned something this morning uh, this afternoon uh, thank well it was good to know that uh, your society was founded in uh, 77 so it's the oldest society in E3S, which is good. Yeah, so, good. Um, well, we have a few minutes for questions, uh, uh, if any. For the moment, uh, we don't have uh, questions. If anyone uh, uh, want to ask something, I can raise the hand. Yes, we have Paola. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the go, but still uh, following. No, I was wondering uh, from what Denke presented that uh, the, the Norwegian society is looking into this uh, issue of uh, plastic not being able to be used um, anymore in testing. Uh, uh, is uh, the Italian society or the German looking into that also? And have you found something that could be third? Well, we, we um, well, I'll say a few things about the Italian sensory science. We haven't uh, started to work on it, but uh, it's our priorities, one of our priorities, because of course we need to consider and limit uh, the, the use of plastic or avoid the use of plastic. Um, unfortunately, uh, as Venke said, uh, alternatives that are not ideal at, at the moment. Uh, so easy to use uh, well, when, we, when we work with plates uh, because they are easy to, to wash and clean, in a, uh, but uh, more difficult uh, when we go with the glasses uh, because we normally we need a number of them uh, which is which is complicated but of course we have to solve this problem uh, no no i was saying maybe there are other other um, uh, experiences on that dirk please Germany, we have two aspects uh, on the one side we have our working group on quality and they're working, developing these best practice guidelines for disposables, like straws or something, to test how neutral they are, or do they impact um, the, the flavor or the, the food we are testing with this disposables. And they're now into um, paper and, and other kind of stuff to get away from, from this plastic. But on the other side, in our working groups, our regional working groups, this is the hot topic of the year. Uh, so I've joined all of the regional groups at the moment. Everybody is discussing that because they all got a company guideline to get away of plastic or to be more carbon dioxide neutral or whatever kind of restrictions. And that is the biggest topic. We're also planning some kind of presentation towards the end of the year during our conference um, and during our hopefully live meetings of these regional groups we already agreed in all of the four groups that people bring all their stuff to that group sessions uh, that they exchange their experience and what how, how they have replaced it what have they used how does it work uh, because some people uh, started approaches which are ridiculous so they moved to glass but then they they use pens and they need alcohol and acetone to, to clean it afterwards to get it neutral. It's such an effort where you could make a big question mark, is that better for the environment uh, with all of the water and all the cleaning and all the energy they use to, to get rid of, of that at the end of the day. But it's the biggest topic at the moment on the operational working groups. And I'm happy to, to keep in contact and to share some of the outcomes or some of the findings during the next sessions we have beginning of next year. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest opportunity to see now this overlay that we are working on, on totally similar projects uh, and then we can enhance exchange between the, uh, the organizations, our findings, our experience, even on a European level now. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dirk. This is very interesting, and of course, uh, uh, also procedures to overcome problems of uh, COVID are making the things even more complicated. 
uh, in terms of uh, reusage of materials, uh, which is which is tricky. So uh, it's it is something that uh, we need to work on seriously and maybe um, find the right solution. There is also a further question, a first question from Max uh, Selty. Selty. Uh, do you want to say the, the, repeat the question to for all the audience or do you want me to read it, Max? Um, I, I can do it, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a member of the Methods Committee of the French Sensory Society. Um, and uh, over the last few years, we have discovered that there's a gap in between the topics which are interesting for academia and the topics which are instead uh, interesting for the companies and industrial corporations and so on. That there's a kind of a gray area in between. And we have dedicated part of the methods committee to explore this um, for the you know, for the sensory science in general. Uh, one example is uh, we just won um, a poster at the, the latest Bangborn, okay? So I just wanted to, I just was just curious to know whether in your groups there are similar initiatives. Venke, uh, uh, Dirk, you want to say something on that? Yes, but you first, if you want. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so, so yes, uh, we we had the same feeling and the same problems. Uh, one solution was to create these groups that are uh, working groups that are composed with members working in the in in industries. Uh, but also keeping strong the link with other working groups and uh, with the general activities of, Italia, of uh, Italian Sensory Society. Otherwise, there is a sort of isolation of uh, groups from the rest of the companies. So what we what we experimented is that uh, probably research activities uh, in which industries can be involved are the best way to have a confrontation um, and um, sometimes you know to, to have a an interest that goes over the the, the daily work in in food industries our, our experience is that Within the companies, they're working very often on very complex and very holistic approaches like language decoding and consumer perception decoding and all of that fancy stuff. And there's a lot of money behind that. But the downside is um, they're not willing to share or to publish everything. So uh, that's always a struggle. You hardly find a post on language decoding from industry because it's a um, competitive advantage and they don't want to share or something. They, they don't publish very often in literature. So the way we are trying to tackle that is to, to, to discuss it more on a relationship base during these working groups and on a smaller scale, uh, because the other people are more willing to, let's call it, open their cupboards rather than doing big presentation on a big stage or in front of a big uh, auditorium. So we keep it a little bit lower. But what we are doing uh, quite frequently is we do some service in Germany uh, what are the topics of the day? What are the methods you are using um, to identify what are the top topics people are interested in? To, to then take that on to workshops or presentations during the conference to, to cover these topics. But, but I fully agree, uh, there's sometimes a gap between what's happening at university and probably the amount of money spent in industry on huge studies with thousands of consumers, millions, sometimes of investment behind um, and but the lack of sharing their results or insights they found and we try to keep it on a lower level to integrate it back uh, into the pipeline of knowledge sharing uh, and not making it on big scale and big auditorium and more sharing um, of experience during the working groups on a trust base or something. Mm. Well, I think um, for the Norwegian society as well, it's it's a little bit like uh, you said, Dirk, that um, uh, maybe there is uh, some of the work they are not willing to share. So uh, in our community, it's mostly the generic uh, questions uh, as I've presented today as well, which everybody is sort of struggling with 
uh, like uh, this uh, uh, single-use plastic or 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 how to conduct tests or or also uh, food waste we have had as an issue so so it's more the generic uh, topics that are uh, uh, risen in our community mm. thank you thank you to you max uh, other questions No. Okay, then uh, I think uh, I would uh, like to thank uh, the speakers, Benke, Dirk, myself, uh, and uh, uh, say hello to everyone and uh, see you next time, next webinar. Bye yes. bye. Okay, can I say Whoa. just two things for yeah. the attendees? Yes. Uh, first one uh, that uh, I leave in the chat. Uh, um, the link to the link to the um, YouTube channel of uh, E3S, where you can find this uh, recorder. And second thing, uh, next month on 7 December, we present we will present the France, Finland, and Denmark societies. Uh, you can follow the our page on LinkedIn and um, and Twitter, and uh, to stay update for for these events. Thank you very much. Thank you for hosting. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.